Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. And I'm Robert Winters. And should we finish what we started yeah, we, there? Yeah, so we talked just a little bit about, um, there's a city council order there's just requesting, order. it was really, it was a policy order, but it was really more in the form of a request for information. Was it about, initiated by Councillor Siddiqui? Yeah, but I think it's one of the outgrowths of this tenant displacement task force. Oh, right, force. yeah, which she runs. Right, yeah. so I think that, so the order, I believe, was Siddiqui and McGovern. Okay. And, um, and you know, they're doing something just like Alana Mallon's task force the on arts task, the arts task force. Yeah. They're doing something which I think is pretty sharp. They're basically saying rather than just meet for six months or whatever mm -hmm. and then come out with a big crazy report, yeah. you know, full of recommendations, what we're going to do is we're actually going to sort of put out interim things like requests yeah. for information, and put that, out an idea here sense. or there, yeah. and do it a little bit more incrementally. Yeah, getting information. Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea. Because then you actually, yeah. I mean, there are certain things when you were doing a process. I mean, yeah. by the way, I mean, one. I'm sure if I was Doug Brown and Mike Nakagawa, mm -hmm. I would argue that that's, that's exactly what we did with Envision Cambridge. They yeah. had this, these, some of the recommendations that may have yeah. come out about Alewife. Yeah. They then turned it into the Brown Nakagawa petition before mm -hmm. the Envision process concluded. Hmm. So was that a <clears throat> was that a good process or bad process? Eh, it depends on your point of view. I yeah, guess. yeah. You know, um, I think that if you cherry pick certain parts of um, recommendations that may have been coming out of the Envision process, and then paint on a lot of other provisions that are more to your liking to create it, then you're you're sort of doing a little bit of a workaround. You know, saying saying let's not do it exactly mm -hmm. as the process wanted. Yeah. Let's I'm just gonna flavor it my own way and, and jump the gun. So and I think that's one, at least one of the reasons why some people objected to that one. But but that's another task force that's now ongoing is looking into some of what? those resiliency related matters that were When was that formed? Of, um that, that was, was recent, uh, right? When the or, I guess it was like Oh, last, it was right after the whole petition thing. Yeah. Yeah, so that basically got trounced uh, last summer at the midsummer meeting, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Councilman Zondervan filed reconsideration, said, no, we have to so rethink this. So is he running that? This, no, this he's not. Um, so there are, actually, Doug Brown is on the committee. Mike oh, Nakagawa right. was on right. the, this, I think it's called so the task force. So has there been any? But it came about as a result of a Tim Toomey order. That's that right. happened the night. So have they been uh, meeting? I mean, down. are those public meetings? I went to the first one. You did. Uh, and there will be another one, I think, in the end. Maybe there was a second one. So are know. those all listed also on the hearing schedule or not? Probably not, which is oh. kind of a problem. because. Well, we, then where do you find it? Um, yeah, I guess you've got to really look. So, for example, hmm. um, so if you're a city council committee and you're going to be having a, a hearings or whatever, they're all meeting. part of public right. meetings, whatever. A Technically, task force is different. Well, you Urban know, the, Master Task Force. If they are doing the public's business, yeah, I believe be the these are still public meetings, but they are not typically well advertised. So would it be on a city calendar? I haven't seen seen it there. Well, um, you have to go to Cambridge Civic. Calendar. I don't necessarily have them either, but I, I'm going to oh, try. Well, let's All try. right. So, for example, I, the city council gets minutes from the Arts Task Force. We've they've right. had five meetings now. And you know, and these voluminous uh, yeah. minutes um, right. uh, are in there. You know, so they are reported to the council. So, we, which seems says to me mm -hmm. that this was part of a council process, uh, even if it's not a council committee. It's a little bit more, almost like a, an ad hoc committee yeah. of one cha one counselor, yeah. though other counselors may sure. go. Uh, there's some city staff, and then there's other members of the public who are appointed. So these are Somet appointed by the mayor. Sometimes though. the councillors, if they have newsletters that go out, so I think Jan Devro does a very extensive meeting thing, but I'm not even sure it's on there. So right. I don't know. So the thing is, is we've got this resiliency, you know, the Brown Nakagawa mm -hmm. outgrowth one. We've got the arts one. We've got this tenant displacement. You've got uh, Urban Master Tree or whatever the, it's called. Yeah, right. Urban and those forest. meetings are made public, and yeah. people are invited. You know, I guess it's probably fair to say, I'm mm -hmm. not 100% sure, that these are all technically public meetings. They are. But they're not, they're not publicized in the manner the that River a lot Street of other ones are. Public meeting. And that, and that is... It's not well advertised either. Right. So I get that. Yeah. You so, get that. now, I don't know, maybe they're practical... We went to that. We could talk about that that's for right. a minute, too. That but, was interesting. You know, that's right. That's right. Was that last week? It was. Okay, so let's say a quick word about it. Let's do a quick pivot here, okay? Quick pivot. 
All right, so we went to this right uh, after our show. Right after the show yeah. last week, we went to this one. I wasn't planning to stay the whole time. It, and was, it was the second was, meeting of this uh, River Street working group. Yeah. So the thing is, is the reconstruction of River Street up to and including Carbound Plaza. Mm -hmm. um, and when as we walked in, it was we were right in the middle of the presentation from yeah. Charlie Sullivan Which from the start. Is that Michigan. online, by the way? They they promised that they would put the, the materials of online. River Street, I, and I, I have to say, yeah. I saw some things that as part of that presentation, yeah. and I know my history. Yeah. And I was going, I, I was jaw dropped. I, Which I said, this was great. Um, the, the fact that there might actually still be these tide gates still buried under oh, the right. gas station yes. down where there was an inlet off That's the Charles right. River, they have to work right on, around right. the site where Riverside Press Park so is. So sewer separation, some are combined, some are not. Right? There were some really yeah. great historic photos showing the trolley yes. lines going down River Street. Right. River Street, when these were two way streets. That's right, Back in the old and it days. became one way because of the turnpike construction, yep, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So um, it became a major highway, which that's is that's right, which <laughs> then led to the right. group, this halt group, which you know, humans against loud trucks. When was that? Um, probably in the early seventies, I'm guessing. Oh, wow. Um, you know, but that was a big thing. David Clem, who was a, then a city, became a city David councilor Clem, shortly afterwards. Yeah. David Clem was actually, you know, involved with that yes. um, humans against loud mm -hmm. trucks. Yeah. Okay. You know. So it was great, you know, uh, and and there was so, some nice, uh, you know, Beautiful. vintage yeah. photos, good quality photos, aerial photos. Uh, you know, it's worth seeing. You know, I would love to see that. So you, they're still preparing. It's not they, online, no, as they, far as you know. I haven't looked, but the thing is, they okay. said they're going to put it among the materials. So if you kind of look on the city website, find that River Street Task Force. They have some little tab Great. there right, under do documents, and then this should be there. Because I'm living on River Street now temporarily, and That's I right. just right across from the firehouse. There you go. And so, I heard those trucks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know anyway, it was it turned out to be great. You know, yeah, it was a really... Uh, honestly, some of these meetings in the city yeah. are real civic education. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, well, I have then they talked about they had collected data at different points. It was whole data presentation. Yeah, right? so then the, tre the people yeah, from get, um, yeah. the Vision transportation zero, right? planning Vision people zero, yeah. within CDD, yeah. Megan Tech, uh, they, um, they were putting up some information about, um, you know, pedestrian loads, Ride share, you know, oh, right. uh, what yeah. share of uh, transportation is done by foot, mm -hmm. uh, bike, uh, um, right. automobile, yes, right. bus, trucks, right. you know. That's right. Yeah, it's a whole and, graph thing. I yeah, and you can very much see that it's much more tilted toward the uh, motor vehicle when you get down near the river, and it right. becomes more, more tilted toward pedestrian right. when you get near Central King, Square. Right. Exactly. So it's not like one uniform standard about it. Mm. You know, I mean, I'm absolutely sure that. You know the city's bias, and certainly if this municipal mm -hmm. ordinance passes, uh, will be to sort of create separated bike lanes on there. Which, by the way, you know, again, I'm not the biggest fan, but if if unless you control some of the highway-like speeds on well, places that, like that's River been Street, brought up a lot. that was brought up a lot by right. people there. So, yeah. See, my feeling that's about separated facilities is that they make yeah. sense when there's a di great differential exactly. in speed between you know uh, right. bicycle-type users. Uh, and motor vehicle operators. Like, for example, along an interstate highway, yes. you wouldn't say, let's just take the lane, little right. bicyclist. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. Right. So right. you would you would want to have a separate facility, and the right. higher the speed differential, the more the call for it. Right. Um, you know, so to me, I'd be happy with streets that were, if you could just calm them to the point of exactly. having really slow speeds, then I don't think you really need that much. I mean, there is a, a separate the lane. first light you hit is at Putnam and River. Yeah, and there's people have said that there's also yeah. a psychological matter where you, you've yes. been on the highway for a while, you're still right. on the highway in your mind. And the next light is not till Howard Street. Right, exactly. Right. So, so I'm sure there'll be some kind of traffic calming that'll be part of what grows out of this. Also, it's five feet shorter than Western Ave, so just consider that in terms of bike lanes and stuff. That's it the makes it much more yes. difficult to right. do the bicycle accommodation unless you are... To do a are, dedicated, that whole right. thing. Right, yeah. I mean, unless you do things like A... Yeah. Take out all the trees on one side and just widen the street. <laughs> knock out, but nobody's going to do that. Are there that many trees left over there? Actually, they pointed out that there's a fair amount of canopy on one side of the street, but not so much on the other. Right. And when I heard that, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, are they just sort of making some space here oh, to justify okay. just bump, you know, pushing things well, out? Well, I know where the firehouses there aren't any trees. In the backyards there are, but not along yeah. that. Yeah, whatever. So, I mean, some of it has to do with which, which direction the sunlight is coming from, too. So right, that's uh, true. And there may oh, also be the some historical reasons. If you're going up river, 
the left side gets the sun. And I think that's where most of the trees are. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I think you're right. Right? Yeah, I get so. it. I don't have to. I'll take a look. I'll it also may be, it, it can also be related to the housing style because some housing actually comes right up to the sidewalk in some places. That's right. And then some of it is set back in other places. A lot places. of it comes right up to the sidewalk, at least on yeah. my part, Howard J. Right. And, that, yeah. and that affects mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the, the capacity to have healthy trees. Mm -hmm. It also has a, affects the capacity to widen sidewalks or, or narrow sidewalks to accommodate bike Parking facilities. Parking will be an issue. It's already Parking an issue. Parking is definitely, definitely going to be yeah. an issue, yeah. yeah. Mm. So anyway, that was a it was a good thing to go to. Yes, and uh, I and I, I learned do, so I'm going to go to the next one whenever that is. I, I, think think I might go months. to some of them as well. Yeah. I'm, I kind of try to, you know, if there, for example, if there's a planning uh, exercise going on in East Cambridge. I typically will not go to that because I figured that's their business. Let them worry about it. I know Maybe Cambridge Court actually is also a neighbor. Is doing yeah. their third meeting tonight. But yeah, I mean, I have yeah. some interest in the one on River Street primarily because of yeah. how it's going to interact with Central, Central Square. Square. Absolutely. Um, but but the other thing too is is that and people everybody should understand this is that mm -hmm. just like when on Western Ave, what really motivated the Western Avenue project was not just putting in a separate bike facility. Mm -hmm. It was reconstructing all the infrastructure, water, sewer, Well, that's why this is happening. People, and right. that's, that's what River Street is really primarily what it is. It's all about. about the water. Right. That's right. People so, have to remember that. So, yeah. so you know, when you, when you start this, worrying about the streetscape here, remember, right. the street's just the roof exactly. over. Everything's underneath. And there are some, you know, 19th that's century right. That's right. infrastructure that's going to get upgraded and replaced. That was a very good. Who presented that? Was it an engineer from the city? Somebody presented that Yeah, whole, I think there's an engineering consultant yeah. that's working with with the city. And some beautiful graphs. I'm sure that's online about, you know, where the tanks are and where they have to put them and what's it's They're going to reroute, reroute yeah. some of the way the sewerage would flow, mm -hmm. whatever. And, was, you know, yeah. hey, this may not be the most right. exciting thing to some people, but, but I actually find really it, why they're this is what makes this. cities work, you that's know, right. so to me, this is the most interesting stuff of all. you can't see it doesn't mean you're not getting it. The oh yeah, and all oh yeah, that yeah. Utilities. Yeah. So then, anyway, so that's a, that is a public meeting definitely yes. worth being aware of, yes. I think. Um, you know, but then again, you know, one my hope always is that the people who are on the committee mm -hmm. will become so educated that yes. what they come up with at the end is really thoughtful and great, you know. And I'll kind of leave, I'm going to trust people to do well, that. Well, one member of that committee that, that they were allowed to talk with said that they don't take their kids through Carl Barron Plaza. That was pretty I know, I know, so I know. I'm just saying that people, because he said no one's talking about that. You know, um, again, getting back to Central Square a little bit yeah. on this one here yeah. is mm -hmm. that, you know, some people want to view a place like Central Square as as a, a service facility for people who are mm -hmm. troubled. There are also people who are pushing kids in strollers and taking their kids to places so who want it to be vital, a family right? friend, it's a, a very family vibrant friendly, place now. friendly place. There's a lot more people live around there. Are a lot there more now. people live yeah. around there. And my preferred yeah. future for Central Square yeah. is to be primarily a family friendly pedestrian place. friendly pedestrian hang out friendly be able to place, sit down and not yeah. safe place mm -hmm. and whatever and, and to whatever degree we can accommodate yeah. people who are troubled let's try right. our best to do it and we certainly but, have places but you have to you sort know? of plan for yeah. what you want it to be not right. what you think it you're stuck with it being Mm. And and if you know and if you Doesn't can't Patrick get Patrick Barrett always say that kind of thing. I know I always yeah. say it. Yeah. You know, I, I taught Patrick. Look at what you knows. want to be, not not <laughs> trying to figure out. That's right. What do you want it to be? What do you want it to be? And What's make your that vision? your vision, right? Yeah. Where's your vision? You know, going? and then right. you can find <laughs> place around the corners to yeah. kind of fit everything right. else. But think first, what do you want it to what be? What do you want it to be? You know, and and then take it from there. Yeah. So one other thing which is which is uh, you know in, in a way it's almost become routine um so the city manager came back with the annual report from the rating agencies saying oh, we are one of once again one of 30 ish uh, 33, ci 33 cities and towns yeah. in the and country somebody wanted to say well, how do you know that what are they who are they i mean was it Quentin? somebody i, I don't uh, yeah, know yeah i don't know but the, but i'll take it at their word the thing yeah, is, is that so there's a, a yeah. handful of cities that get basically the, AAA, the, the top possible AAA bond rating uh, from all of the rating agencies. Right. So in Cambridge is one of them, you yeah. know, and it's one of our points of pride. And mm. I think it's one of the greatest statements about our sequence of city managers, right. you know, whether it was Bob Healy uh, or Sorry. Richie Rossi, Lisa Peterson, 
temporarily and now Louis Di Pasquale who's been doing the he's been sort of the budget yeah. guy for throughout throughout it all yeah. you know it does say a lot about us yeah. but you know the other thing too about it is is that just as it's become sort of a rite of spring or or almost spring mm. to get our triple a bond ratings so actually I think they usually come a little earlier in the year um is that then you know as day follows night and night follows day there's always one or two or three, in this case, I think three city councilors who say, we have well, all if, this money, if we're doing we so good, yeah. well, that means, Mr. Manager, give us more money. We've got to start spending, spending, spending. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like the, so the well, more Well, let's do, see. We've got the school we're renovating. We have these sewer projects that we're doing. Well, the what thing else? is, is yeah. you know, so Louis Di Pasquale, the city manager, then points mm -hmm. out and said, look, you know, since I took over as city manager, this is my third budget I'm putting in now, coming right currently. Mm -hmm. It'll be out soon. Um, you know, that they've added, what was it, 25 positions or 30 some odd positions mm. in various city departments to support yeah. the various city council oh, priorities. Right, right. Oh, that's you know, true. We're, we're sort of in the, in the, we're kind of finishing, it's going to take, still take time, our, our second of the school reconstructions, we first did the, right. the Putnam Ave School, now right. we're doing the, totally. the um, no, no, that's next oh. in queue. But oh. we're still working on the, the Cambridge Street. Oh, now, the King the old Street. Harrington. Right, I'm sorry, yeah. the King Open, yeah. Yeah, okay, I and um, this is the, yes, it's not, I know I'm becoming a seasoned old Cambridge <laughs> guy when I call it the old Harrington. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. down well, at the old Maynard School. Yeah, it would, it, yeah, yeah the I old mean, Roberts right, School. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, um, you know, and then we'll have a next one, and I think there may be one even potentially after that. So, um, you know, so we're doing some big projects. Um, mm -hmm road reconstructions this is not all paid by the state i think there's some right. reimbursement but not all right. so we're spending we're spending folks yeah. you know but i think some of the political people want to say but hey mr manager i want you to just allocate another 50 million dollars to um to build subsidized housing or to plant I, I uh, like to remind people 50, that we pay, more trees. we pay employees very well i think in this yeah. city we pay city councilors and school we pay that more than the average I, i'd be curious about these 33 communities and what they pay their you know right. i'm just saying you know we we spend pretty we liberally in fact i think the Great budget benefits yeah right the budget has been increasing i think louis said 4.5 percent annually right I think the tax levy, levy 4.5% annually, which is in excess of inflation. So we are not being cheap. We are spending money, no. you know. Now, if you want to sort of drain the bank account, you know, all right, fine. But, um, but anyway, thankfully, it was only, I think it was, well, it was primarily Councillor Carlone. Yeah. I think Zondervan, to a lesser degree, mm. Devereaux, who basically we're arguing more for like, well, if we if we have this capacity, let's start using it, right? Mm, I don't and you know, I think that's one of those things where the wise counselors should sort yep. of hold back a little bit, especially you know? since you're being treated well. Yeah, yeah. according yeah. to me, the man never made a whole lot of money. Definitely, in life, so definitely. I'm gonna look up those. How would I find that out? The 33 uh, go to Moody or somebody? Um, because I'm, I'm gonna actually make that my distraction. You know, I don't know whether Moody's or... or um, I'd like to know how big these cities are. I'd like to know what their form of government yeah, is and what their um, right. what they pay for administration. Yeah, it would be interesting to see yeah. how many... I mean, is Cambridge a major city at 100 no. plus thousand? It is a city. What's you know, the definition? 100,000, right? You know, by Massachusetts standard, that's... A, no, city is a form of oh, government right. versus but, town oh, government. You, that, you can declare yourself. Yeah. A, Framingham I mean, declared Cam itself Cambridge a was yeah. a town until right. 1846. Newtown. Uh, no, it was oh. it was called Newtown back in the very early oh, founding okay. of it, but then it, it changed its name to Cambridge oh. probably within five or ten years of its being Newtown. Oh, okay. Uh, and then we gave the, town, the name Newtown to a, a, one of the cities <laughs> we cut out and that's Newton, oh, Massachusetts. Newton, of course. Newton, Massachusetts oh, is the last vestige of Newtown. Oh, you're right. I, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, Cambridge yeah. as a municipality in the early days is yeah. a, uh, actually was a lot of Middlesex County. Yeah. Uh, and then it kind of shortened and you know, scrunched down to what cows, it became. But it was a town <laughs> until 1846, mm. and then okay. uh, it became a city. And its population, population wasn't still big, but the thing is, is that a city operated then. by different... Sure rules and different form of government right right, right. um i think framingham was a town until they, they, they now become declared, a city. even though you're right that's what i was thinking yeah that, yeah 
So you know, so you can you can change. Doesn't the, I mean a lot of Division two schools decide to be Division one? It really does. I always thought you had to be a certain size, so you can sort of elect to be with the big guys. You know, one of the things that happens <laughs> when you I believe that was a sports metaphor. Right. Yeah. I think it's when your population exceeds a hundred thousand. You have. What to. it means is that if you're a municipal oh, candidate, yeah. you actually have to get depository bank accounts and do so. That's more. Every it's a legal weeks. thing more than if it's yeah. Suit, so yeah. Th there are certain provisions that affect okay. you. By the way, there is one new. Uh, Official candidate. Oh, I found about. I found out oh, about right. an hour before. It. Really? Well, I, I, you know what? I, I promised well, I, I was going to go overboard. Well, but how many are actually declared besides? Incumbents? Nobody's really no? declared. But okay. the thing is, is one of the measures of whether somebody is raising money. It, well, one is if they're raising money, but you yeah. can't raise money until, oh, until you, you have an account, and you I can't have it. an account until, until you, you file with the state. Okay. So what I do is I look oh. for who's recently organized. So I just looked at ah, there's not going to be anything okay. there. And, and I went there today, and yeah. somebody filed today. Someone you know? Yeah. Someone I know? No. Oh. I don't think so. There's a guy who's sort of been coming up to city council meetings for a while named Charles Franklin. Oh, I know who that is. You do he's, know? He, he's there all the he, time. Yeah, he's there all the time. He's on he Upgrade Cambridge, too, isn't he? Um, yeah, he may be. I think he is. Right, so yeah. he lives on Hampshire Street. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, now Interesting. There, okay. There is, there is one other candidate um, that I do know. I, you know, there's an MIT student. I mentioned his name. Right. Is, Last name is Azim. It is he actually eating right. down the couch? Um, there's oh. some rumor going about that, oh, um, of 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 uh, uh, an, one other, but I'm, I think maybe I'll hold back on. on All right, naming you can tell me after the show. But another person who has got some affiliations with Harvard Square. Uh oh. As well as a, a certain woman? festival, yeah, uh, not the one you're thinking oh, of. Oh, oh, So anyway, we'll certain see if that festival. actually happens or not. You know, people think about it and then they pull out. There were actually several candidates in the last election cycle who filed papers with the state sure. and then said, said nah, yeah. never mind. Do you pay money to file? I don't think, I don't actually, I don't know. I, if yeah. you do, it's very little. Yeah. Uh, you basically have to pick a treasurer uh, and then you I have see. to set up a bank account. So, um, I think I heard today Michael Bloomberg said he's probably not going to run. Uh, really? Yeah. That's a shame. I think he might be an interesting candidate. But then again, the presidential candidate sweepstake yeah. is getting really crowded ridiculous. well that was one of his references yeah. he said he could do better job doing from hillary said that too and not that i think she ever considered it but she said i am, I am not a candidate for 2020 but i am going to be out all right there. so i'm, I'm going to as a away. as um yeah since i know you were a very we were oh. strong supporters oh. of hillary Clinton. Oh. um do you think if uh, there's a presidential candidate chosen at the convention and somebody said hillary would you like to be a vice presidential candidate? Oh, Do you God. think that's something she would consider? No. No? I don't Why? Know. First of all, it's pro it might be a woman, but we don't know. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, where did you get that? I just made it up. No. If you can't be president, if she can't be president, Fight? let well, her do something No, else. I agree, I agree. But the thing is, Joe Biden ran for president before, and then he accepted the role as vice president. Yeah, now president. he's running for president. You think he's running for Hillary, president? You know what? People wouldn't yeah, stand for saying, it. I, I, you think Joe do. Biden's got a chance? A lot of people, he's 76. I know, that's the issue. That's an issue. But the thing is, is where he stands in the political spectrum I know. is a very is a great he's attraction. He's kind of a centrist, because we're going to be overtaken by progressives, people feel, and they... I mean, who knows? Well, you know, the thing is yeah. the way a lot of the... I mean, you know, one of the problems well, with the way the American political system works... See, now we've pivoted to I national. know. I mean, because right? you have to. All right? But the thing is, is that oftentimes in the primary, you kind of... You tilt, you tilt toward the edge of, edge of the spectrum politically. Yep. So the Democrats will push left. Right. So and the Republicans will push right someone's in order to sort of, middle. you know, become the darling of the, you know, either extreme. But then once you get a nomination, then you have to quick do a turnaround and kind of pitch toward the center. So that to didn't work for Hillary. Because all those win. Bernie right. bros well, you know, sisters a, didn't vote for Right. Her. Well, it's a problem, actually, yeah, I, I think, systemically, where if you basically you, if you feel you're forced to define yourself I by know. the extreme in order to get a nomination well. and then change, change your tune, there's, there's political risk associated with that. Did you hear he's that. got a million volunteers signed up already? Bernie? You know, Bernie. I got no use for him. I don't know. I really don't. And I don't right. know, at this point, it's just too. But you know, the thing is, what me. might actually happen too yeah. is that now that it's not just him, you'll actually have a kind of a crowd of people trying to define the left, and it may actually create space. 
for somebody who's a little bit more I think Elizabeth Warren's going to all of a sudden emerge as who she really is, basically a centrist in some ways. Well, the thing she's is... She's got is, some progressive ideals, but in many ways... But some ways she's also... She's also to, a politician. She's trying to out Bernie. Yeah, Bernie. Exactly. So then Bernie jumps back in, so yeah. now maybe she'll... You know what? You'll have, Elizabeth, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you, you waited too long to endorse Hillary, so you're now getting yeah. a little bit of that. But, but you know, there was a, yeah. the, the Democrats are going to have a bit of an issue... The same issue that the Republicans had two mm -hmm. years, four years ago, three oh. years ago. Uh, namely, the thing is, it was a 17-car uh, oh, train, yeah. right? And um, and then basically, you, you, <laughs> right? But you you basically <laughs> split all the constituencies, yeah. and yeah. then you know, I mean, the Democrats this. have a little bit of a better shot at w making it work because Do we have a Trump-like figure running. No, now? we don't. But oh, the thing God. is, Democrats don't mm. favor winner-take-all primaries. Ah, they the should change that everywhere. Did. You're right, yeah. and that's what that's so, why we have Trump. So what what in may very ways. well happen yeah. again? You know, until I see oh, one candidate or two candidates yeah. really, really jump ahead of the pack, and I don't right. see it happening anytime soon. Yeah, right. I think there's a very real chance that you're going to go into a Democratic primary, uh, excuse me, Democratic nominating convention uh, in the summer of 2020. Uh, with no candidate who has an absolute majority of delegates, so they'll have to do the first ballot, mm. and then people bailing out, and then yeah. and there may very well be a brokered convention. Wow! And then who the hell knows what's going to come out of that? Oh my God! Know? I don't know if I can um, deal with the, it. The, the the Republicans they just basically had one prominent name out of seventeen, the TV guy. Yep. Who had the highest unfavorability ratings right. ended up as their nominee. Yep. That's nuts. It is nuts. But uh, that's what happened. Um, the de that's and probably we're, and not we're how we're paying for that, having this reality star as a president. Yeah. So Shame um, on you, America. Yeah. Really, <laughs> well, what? we got to work on this. Really, we got to work on this. But nobody's talking about our electoral systems. I and know. And that's a real shame. You right. Because I think that's probably what's... Of yes. electing people more so than the individuals. No, so, you're, so much. You're right. So. Okay. Well, so anyway. Back to this. Back to local. <laughs> anyway, I guess we'll, we'll see be you back next week. There's no council. Probably next, next week. week. So probably, anyway, but, but anyway, yeah. in any case, we'll see you soon on Cambridge okay. Inside Out. Good night.